So once your implementation has finished, uh, you'll get this window that will give you a couple options. The next thing you want to do is generate a bitstream. So select generate bitstream, hit OK. This will go ahead and start writing the .bit and .bin file that we need for programming. Um, again, the bit file is the one that goes onto the Arctic 7 and the .bin file is the one that goes onto the memory device. Uh, so, if you want to look at the status of it here, if you see I'm selected log and under implementation, it gives you the current uh, status of progress. So, now that it's finished, we can go ahead and open Hardware Manager. Hit OK. Um, here, before we go ahead, we want to look at our, before we connect our device, we want to look at our basis board. And up here on the top right hand corner, you want to make sure that uh, your little blue jumper is on the QSPI mode. As you see, it has four pins, so the top two pins puts you in the QSPI mode, the middle two puts you in JTAG mode, and the bottom two in the USB mode. So that's important when we come to programming. So once you have uh, verified that your jumper is on QSPI mode, we can go ahead and open target. If you have recently connected to your device, you can go to recent targets and select it. Or you can go ahead and hit open new target, next, here, uh, local server, next, and search for it, um, here it did not find mine, because it is not turned on, so let me plug mine into my USB, and turn my basis 3 board on, go ahead and search it again, hit next, and we have found the device, so, uh, here you want to change the JTAG, frequency to 30 megahertz and the one at the bottom and select this device hit next again that is a JTAG frequency not the actual frequency for the basis board itself so hit finish and up on this window you should see uh, your device the XC memory device no. So you should see this XC7A35T. Again, that is the uh, Arctic 7 chip itself. If you wanted to program the Arctic 7 itself, you would right click on it and select program memory device. So I mean program device. Uh, so program device will allow you to select the bit file. So here you go here. And you find the bit file for uh, your module. Let's see. Anyway, we are not going to be programming the Arctic 7. We'll program the uh, memory device. So, to add a memory device, we will right click on the XC7 again, right click on it, and we go to add configuration memory device. And here in search, we'll enter expansion, S P A N S I O N. And then you'll select this S25 FL032P. So select that one, hit OK. And then it'll ask you if you want to go ahead and program the memory device now. Uh, we'll hit OK since we do. Uh, here under configuration file, you'll select the bin file, the dot bin file. Uh, mine's already at that location. As you see, it was generated a few minutes ago, so this is the correct file. But if you did not automatically come to it, you can go to your file and go to your project. My project is called IPS Tutorial. And then go to your dot runs file. Double click on that one. And then your IMPL1 file. And that's where your dot bin file should be. So you can highlight that one, hit OK. 
hit OK again. So that'll go ahead and erase the memory device and then add the new program onto the memory device. This will take a few minutes and again it is important that you have the blue jumper on the QSPI mode for uh, for it to program onto the memory device. So this will program the uh, basic three board with our module that we just did. Again, our module uh, is taking the signal off of the IPS sensor into one of the PMOD ports. Uh, the PMOD port location can be found on our XDC file, which is our Xilinx design constraint file. And uh, we have already created our voltage divider and our uh, voltage regulator network needed for our signal on our uh, capacitive proximity sensor. So uh, now it says it's been programmed successfully, so we can OK. Uh, now that it's been programmed successfully, I will turn it off and unplug it from my computer. And I can go ahead and switch to camera mode. So there's my camera. So now as you see, my basis 3 board here is uh, not connected to our USB and all we have powering it is a 5 volt regulator. Uh, on the earlier, on part 1 video, I do think I said that this was a 3.3 volt regulator but it is in fact a 5 volt regulator as shown on my multimeter and as uh, requested here on the basis board it says that you need a 5 volts uh, input so we have our 5 volts going in we can go ahead and turn it on uh, the LED that we program is this farthest right LED but uh, before we continue we want to go ahead and uh, look at our data sheet real quick to see where our PMOD port jumper is. So to find a the data sheet, you can uh, you should already have saved, or if you don't, you can Google Basis 3, come to the Digilent site, and here is data sheet. So on the data sheet, scroll all the way to the bottom, come to the PMOD section, here we go. So looking at this picture, here it tells you the location of each individual port. So looking at our XTC file, we can see that uh, our signal is coming in at pin J1. So pin J1, uh, looking at this would be this pin right here. Here, I don't know if you can tell, but on the left-hand side, there's a line that is the bottom of the board. So the uh, line indicates the bottom of the board. So J1 is the top pin on this left-hand side. So switching back over to our camera mode. Now that we know where our input needs to go, I can turn the basis board back on, plug in a jumper to that port J1 and remember this is an inverter so if I plug in a ground ground is a logical zero and a z logical zero gets inverted to uh, a one which turns the LED on so if I plug in a 3.3 volts uh, each one of these J uh, PMOD port has a 3.3 volts uh, DC port and a ground DC uh, ground port. So here, this is the 3.3 volts. Again, gets inverted from a one to a zero. And when we plug in the ground, gets inverted from a zero to a one. So now we see this program is uh, working the way it's supposed to. The next thing we want to look at is our signal that we're about to take into our uh, basis board. So our signal here, I just plugged in this long blue wire. Uh, this long blue wire, I'm going to hook it up to our multimeter. 
And as you see, we have a 3.3 volts. So that 3.3 volts is coming off our voltage divider network that we uh, created a few minutes ago. So that 3.3 volts is coming from this node uh, in between both resistors and our voltage divider network. All right, so again, that's our 3.3 volts when it does not detect anything. And when the sensor detects something, it goes down to a zero. So um, before we take that signal in, now that we saw that it is the correct voltage for it to go uh, safely into the basis board, before we take the signal in, we have to do what's called a common ground. So here I'll grab this uh, long black wire, and I'll hook it up from any ground on the PMOD port on the basis board. So notice I am not using the same ground as the uh, <coughs> PMOD that I'm using. So we're using this PMOD, but I can use this ground to get a common ground. And I'll plug that into the ground terminal, ground rail. And now I can remove the signal from my multimeter and plug it into its appropriate port here with this J1 which is this top top one right here so the blue wire the long blue wire is our signal going into our port J1 and we have a common ground going from our basis board to our breadboard so now we're ready to take the signal into our basis board and if I'm not blocking the LED here I can just hold it you should see that as I sorry, the wire came out here, and that as we uh, put a metallic object in front of the sensor, the LED does come on. So, the sensor turns on, it detects something, it the signal tr goes through the basis board, goes through a voltage divided network into the basis board and it turns on the LED. So because we had that uh, inverting symbol on our uh, basis board, we can see that uh, the signal gets inverted and turned on to this basis board, the LED. Alright, so that concludes on how to take a signal into the basis board. Uh, and on future videos, I can show you how to do other tasks and other things.